Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Anime Orange, and welcome to another Metal Earth build. Today we are going to put together the Flintstones car, as you can see here. Now this model is listed as a fairly easy model on the package, and basically it looks like a couple of fairly simple Legends models with a possibly simple car. Well, let's go over to the table, open this up, see what's inside, and how difficult it's going to be to put it together. We have the package for the Flintstones car special edition model. This is, as I've kind of already mentioned, a unique package. It looks to be about the size of a Iconics model, and I have an Iconics model right here beside it. So they're about the same size, but certainly a lot thinner. Now this is not called an Iconics model, but I have noticed I am recording this right before the release of the Game of Thrones models. So if this video is coming out after that, I'm initially opening this and starting this. A little secret, sometimes these videos can take a while to make. I do them in pieces of opening this before the Iconics. I point that out because the pictures that I have seen of the Game of Thrones Iconics models come in sheets very similar to this. They're Iconics, they look to be thin sheets, but kind of the Metal Earth thin sheet style, but larger, and they have this little perforation at the type. So I'm wondering, is this going to be what the new Iconics look like. Let's tear this neat looking little tab. This is probably an easy open tab, which I don't know about you, I hate easy open tabs because there's like a real, seriously a dice roll, a D20 roll, and you pretty much have to get a 20 to open these things on that easy slot. And I'm off to a good start here. I'm off to a real good start. Yep, easy open. Uh-huh, that's my luck. Uh-huh. Almost got it all the way through. There we go. There, that's that that's that easy open at work there. I hate easy open packages. They're never easy to open. Unless it's like a yellow moon on the second Monday of the fifth month of a house of something. I don't it's just ridiculous what's inside. Woo! -da -da. We have one big colorful sheet. There's a very interesting smell. Kind of rustic smell. <coughs> hmm. Interesting. Kind of a metallic sawdust weird smell. I've never noticed that in all the models that I've built. Almost earthy. Almost wood with a hint of metal. That's Weird, weird. We have our interestingly long and thin instructions here. That's just further weird. So it's, it's kind of a tall sheet, double-sided. I'm gonna fold it back in half, thinking that this is gonna work. And this is very much laid out like an Ic Iconics instruction, the Metal Earth and Ic Iconics instructions differ in that the Iconics tend to have steps, and that's what I'm seeing here. So this looks like, but it's the Legends model. It's like the Legends Iconics model thing. This is curious. This is curious. All right, so let's look at this real quick. What do we have? We have our usual Legends Metal Earth logos at the top with our QR code and our website to go to if we want to see a completed 360 view of this model for reference. We have our metal sheets listed below. I'm just gonna grab this one. Which one have I got? Looks like I've got sheet B. They started labeling A and B now. I appreciate that they do that. It makes it slightly easier to find parts, although as big as these parts are, I don't think it's gonna be as much of an issue, whatever. You see, this is a line drawing of this part. You'll also notice that some areas are colored in. Yeah. It's like the parts are mostly left white and the sheet is kind of a light tan and then you've got these two are darker tan. This is a slightly different color. And previously parts that are colored the same are the same part. So there's more than one and that makes sense that that's continuing to be what happens. So this is 36. This must be 36. This is something purple that's probably referenced on this sheet. Here we go, 11. So it looks like there's several 11s. So Similar thing, the color parts, with the exception of the light tannish grayish color that's the actual sheet, the colored parts are the same part. So, got your layout here so you can easily find 
the parts as you need them during the build. So that over to page two, and we have a line drawing of the completed model, Flintstones. And to create the best connections, this is talking about, this is kind of your key or legend here. And you've got a sample part with a notation on tabs, slots, and fold lines. Tabs go into slots to make connections. Fold lines are pre-scored or laser cut areas that are not cut all the way through that make it easier to fold apart. We've got the legend symbols down here. E point is pointing at an engraved side or colored side of a part. Any is a non-engraved or non-colored side of a part. Occasionally the any could be pointing at engraving, but it's actually uh, fold lines. So be careful that you don't get that mixed up. I think I had some issues with that on like a, uh, the Enterprise model or something. Tension point is usually referring to make sure you say you align something a certain way. Sometimes there's text with that, Sometimes a lot of times not. Blue circle and green triangle, these have been going on since the start of Metal Earth model. Blue circle means to insert a tab, fold it 90 degrees. Green triangle means to insert a tab in its slot and twist it 90 degrees. The folded tabs are cleaner looking. The twisted tabs are more secure, so you have to kind of weigh. It's going to give you which one they say you should do, but sometimes you have to make your own choice which way you want to go with that. We have assembly tips. Basically, this is a tip that I've given away for quite a while. In some parts, if it's a shaky part and a folded tab, it's better to just lightly twist it to hold it until more of the structure is complete and stable, then come back, untwist, and fold that tab over for a cleaner look. We have a notation about recommended tools. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. Below that, we have the start of the assembly step. Starting with part one, we've got piece one from sheet B. We've got it moving over here, pointing out the non-engraved side. This darker color indicates this is being curved and connected with a folded tab. Then we slide over here and there's more bending and curving going on. Then we come down here, more bending and curving, connecting more tabs here, adding on this part, which is part two on sheet A which starts as this, folds this bit here, and then you come over here and connect it. This is what I usually refer to as a sub-assembly. So you have assemblies and sub-assemblies. Then you end up with this part here, and that's step one. Then you jump down with step two, and follow through doing a very similar thing with step two. Then step three, following through, you'll notice this has an X2 at the end, so this, these steps are done twice. You'll need two part fives. You'll need to shape them both this way. And then jump down, this is page two, go down to the bottom half, again I folded this in half to make it fit on the screen, page three, you pick up a step four, Oop, there's a little extra something here, I missed, I didn't notice before, we'll come back to that, step four, just follow along with those steps, you'll notice that step one, two, and three are referenced here, these are previous steps, the parts that you assembled coming back together. You just continue on in that fashion, going from step to step to step. And in this case, once you get to the bottom of the front sheet, you will open up the back, back to the top, picking up at part five, page five, page six, which is this quarter, page seven, which is this bottom quarter, and page eight, which is this bottom quarter. And once you get to the end of step 31, you are finished with your model. And I missed this little pamphlet because it didn't fall out until I was going over the instructions. It looks like we have just a little, little doodad, colorful thing about all the Metal Earth Legends models. Got all the Avengers, all the Justice League, Guardians of the Galaxy. Flip it over, we've got the Looney Tunes, the Transformers, and the Lord of the Rings models. Hooray! Just put that to the side. Let's talk a little bit about tools. The very basics of what you're going to need is a pair of tweezers and some clippers. The tweezers, you can do a lot of bending, shaping, twisting of tabs, folding of things over. The clippers are going to help you get the pieces out of the sheets cleanly and easily by clipping them out instead of trying to bend them out, which can cause damage. I've also supplemented my set with some precision tweezers. I have a couple of pointed ones here. One, I ground the tip down just a little bit to give it a more sturdy tip for tabs and twisting things. And then I have a precision flat set and between all of these I can do a lot of bending and shaping and twisting. I also strongly recommend some sort of pliers to complement your set. I have some flat nose here that have definite uses. I have some long needle nose pliers for some of the longer pieces and then I have some curved tips for grabbing things at an angle and bending them over. For shaping a lot of curves and dome shapes and whatnot, you'll see me use an array of 3D printed tools that I've designed that you can find on my Etsy if you're interested. Otherwise, I've, you'll also see me pull out a cheap drill bit set that I have that's not sharp for shaping cylinder shapes, or just look around your house and use objects that you find, like 
dowel rods, pencils, maybe some beads to shape certain things. We talked a little bit about tools. I've got the basics to get us started. I got the great big giant iconic size metal sheets at the ready and our instructions good to go. Let's put together a little Flintstones car. I use the end of a drill bit to help curve the end here. I missed a tab, but no big deal. I can just lift up to this edge and slide the slot over the tab. With little bends using precision tweezers, I curved the top of the foot and used the folded up section of the leg to push the top down of the foot into place, finishing the curve.
I didn't want to bend the sides all the way in until after I had secured the arms. I used the white shaping tool to put a slight curve in the middle of the hair. Since the tabs of the ears are so close together, I used the point of the precision tweezers to pry them apart a little, giving room to grab each tab and twist them. I also wanted to add the ears and nose and secure their tabs before folding in the sides of the head so that I would have more room to work.
I am again using the white cone shaping tool to put a small curve in the middle of Barney's hair. To help the tabs on the ears fit better, I gave them a slight twist inward so that I can hold the piece with the tweezers with one side of the tweezers inside of the ear to help keep it open and still get the tabs in their place. I thought for sure I had put the ear on the correct way, but when I double checked after attaching it, I realized I had not. Unfortunately, it did not survive the removal process and broke in the center. Sadly, there was not a spare ear, and I had little choice but to continue on leaving Barney with only one ear. For Barney's head, I needed to curve the tabs for the hair outward just a bit to get them into their slots because of the angle.
With Fred, I had left the body open until after I attached the arm so I would have better access to the tabs, but with Barney, that was not really an option. I still had good enough access to the tabs though. I used a bending tool similar to what you can find on AliExpress that I 3D printed to fold over the sides and I drilled it in to help put the curves in the corners. I originally tried to bend the tabs inward for the rounded corners but found it a bit difficult in a situation where things could easily go wrong. For the next part with rounded corners I went with the tabs folded outwards instead. Don't mind the magnetic push pin, I put it there to keep Fred from falling off of his seat earlier when I took a picture.
I took a short break and went looking around my house for objects to use to shape the large stone wheels of the Flintstones car. The glue stick seemed to be the best option. The stick is a little smaller than the final shape of the object, but when it comes to large pieces with more metal, they tend to open up a little after you've curved them, so you want something a little, a little too small. I think I heard from Metal Earth Globetrotter of Instagram once that he sometimes uses the side of tweezers to fold over long parts. I've tried that with my tweezers in the past, but it's a tough squeeze to squeeze them all the way flat. And then I had the idea to use flat nose pliers to help squeeze the precision tweezers to then fold over the side, long sides. I tried to keep the two different parts separated. They have slightly different sized side flaps on opposite sides, which will come into play later. I have a habit of when I do similar parts like this to put the first one that I do on my left side and the second one on my right to help keep them separated and straight.
Your instructions say to twist these tabs, but I elected to fold them in opposite directions. Folded looks cleaner in opposite directions so that the part will not turn one direction and slide off. I almost missed the flap at the other end. I didn't bend the tabs here in opposite directions. The way things squeezed on, I was not too worried about the part tilting and falling off.
The right side was angled a bit. I twisted it straight and it popped into place. I did not know what was holding it at the time, but after reviewing this video, it looks like it was caught on Barney's arm. Earlier I had assumed while assembling the large wheels that the end pieces, the opened end, would be facing downwards. And so I tried to place them so that the seam of the wheel would also be facing downwards. I was incorrect and should have looked ahead in the instructions. 